everyone, it's Rifka Maka and welcome. Today we're talking about forgiveness. So forgiveness is a huge topic and it's an amazing thing because Yom Kippur comes every year and we're told that our sins are forgiven and we're told to ask one another for forgiveness. But what does forgiveness actually mean? And what is the process of healing as you're getting over whatever this pain was? What about if you're the one who inflicted the pain? How do you get forgiveness? I mean, I'm sure you've had this experience where you apologize to someone. Your apology is very difficult for them to accept. And even when they accept it, your relationship is never quite the same. We don't realize how many resentments we walk around with. Like, it's like a big, heavy sack of resentments. All these stories we carry around from every age and every stage and millions of interactions and institutions and organizations and all the people that wronged us and everything. And without understanding forgiveness, and faith and the role that faith plays in forgiveness, we cannot be whole. I promise you that if you take in the lessons that we're gonna learn today from so many beautiful people and you do some soul searching, you will find new doors opening for you. So open your heart and join the conversation. Today I wanna to introduce you to some people who have amazing things to say and it's kind of a treat for me to introduce them to you because they are so important in my life. And our first guest is Dr. Chaivina Samuels. Chaivina is a chiropractor with an emphasis on functional medicine. We'll ask Chaivina what she does and how it relates to faith and forgiveness. Thank you Rivka Malka. What I do is a type of healing body work that's based in chiropractic but it's really grounded in emotional release. What are we seeing when we say release? There's 12 energy centers in the body. So we're releasing the emotion from that energy center and we're allowing it to balance. So let's bring this um, to our topic here because there's a connection between the work that you're doing and forgiveness. Now what happens when a person doesn't forgive? So when emotions get trapped in your body or they stay there, they it, it can fester and it, sometimes it can create toxins. But what it does is it actually affects your biochemistry. So you can so actually get sick from holding get on sick to from resentment. holding on to resentment. And I have seen it when they release it, their body is able to heal. So I always give people homework. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can shift the energy into something more constructive or productive for yourself, it's basically getting it off of yourself and doing something for someone else. Forgiving another person is a huge act of chesed. But forgiveness doesn't mean that what they did was right yeah. either. So just because you forgive them, you're not condoning what they did. Yeah, it's like a pardon. Like, you right. still did a crime, but I'm absolving you of the debt. Exactly. And that's exactly. my gift to you. And what you're really saying is that's my gift to myself. Right. And the beautiful yeah. thing is, is that what comes after forgiveness uh, is love. And love is one of those things that you were saying at the beginning, like one thing is true on all the levels, you know? Love is you can finally feel Hashem's love that things happen for a reason. Right. You, can, you can love yourself instead of beating yourself up. Right. You can love the other person because... Exactly, but you can't get there yeah. unless you forgive. Did you ever have a time when you had to forgive someone? Absolutely. I wouldn't be able to do this work if I, if I did not know how to forgive. When I was younger, I was raped and I had to learn to forgive. I had to learn forgiveness for the person that did it for me, to me. I had to learn to forgive myself. Right. So I thought, oh gosh, I brought this on myself, yeah, yeah. whatever. So, so harmful. Yeah, it's very harmful and it trickles into a lot of different areas. Like you don't get to be a channel for forgiveness, but you are for so many people unless you've done your work. Right, and I still work on it. I want to share with our audience that from my experience, the journey to forgiveness is the journey to wholeness. It's a choosing of how you want to walk through life as the victim of circumstances, of people, or as a, as a proactive receiver, as a welcomer of all the gifts that Hashem is sending you as a person of purpose and in, you know, with an understanding that all this stuff is for a purpose and part of our life story. I actually want to introduce you to someone. I've been wanting to introduce you to her for a long time. And I want to introduce our audience to her. And she is someone who has helped me on my journey of forgiveness. And um, I'm really excited for the two of you to meet and also for our audience to hear her perspective. 
This is Esther Weiner, my dear friend and healer. She's like a multifaceted diamond. She's a lawyer and a negotiator and also has been in the healing field for 40 years. That means I started when I was three years old. Okay, <laughs> you got it? Okay. I invited you today so you can share how faith and forgiveness work together and really give people an understanding of what, how worth it, it is to do the work of forgiveness. In working over a number of years and in a number of different modalities of healing and energy work, it's become increasingly clear that where we as individuals have our most difficulty is in forgiveness. Whether it's ourselves and many times that is the hardest nut to crack for anyone. Often, that bottom line is, I'm no good, and I'm no good because this happened in my life, and I can't forgive myself for that because I'm bad. That takes God totally out of the picture because, of course, God created us, created us with all of our skills, all of our character, bonuses, and flaws, and loves us completely. So when we can't accept ourselves, we don't let in Hashem's love for us. When we don't let in Hashem's love for us, how on earth can we love somebody else? If we can't forgive somebody else, He won't forgive us. So it, it's like a, this, this ball of knots that need to be unraveled. Forgiving the other is really a step towards our freedom. What does it mean to forgive? What it really means is you understand at the deepest level, in your bones, in your bones, that everything that happens to you is from Hashem. Frankly, I wouldn't be here talking to you and you mm -hmm. and in Baltimore or, at all. Or, or you guys. <laughs> right, uh, any, exactly. any of that yeah. if something really horridly tragic hadn't happened in my life to bring me to Baltimore. In essence, faith and forgiveness have to go together yes. because if you don't have faith, then when something happens to you, you're going to be a victim mm -hmm. and you're going to stay a victim. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if you, can, if you have your faith and you believe that Hashem loves you, and that he's doing everything for your good, then everything that happens to you, whatever comes your way, is a challenge and an opportunity to become the person that you are supposed mm. to be. Yeah. yeah. But by forgiving, you're saying, you know what? This is going to make me stronger, and this is what makes me the person that I am today. Mm -hmm. And that's what made me the person that I am. The ability to, to help people that have been sexually abused and like, you know, that have had serious trauma in their lives. I wouldn't be able to do that if I if I hadn't have gone through it myself. So I always say, when something good. happens to yeah. you, you're an Olympic athlete, yeah. and Hashem does not give you know yeah. wimps an Olympic athlete athlete challenge. Workout. No, he does not. So, uh -huh. so if you step up to the challenge, because you're meant yeah. to be great. All you right. are meant to be great. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, it's a long journey. It's a very long journey, and I think it's it's our journey home to ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Riv Kamal. I feel like high-fiving. <laughs> <laughs>so let's get real on the journey to forgiveness you are going to have some bad days and then those days i want to give you permission to make pancakes for dinner so here is a really easy pancake recipe do you like pancakes i love pancakes and they are truly a comfort food so here's the recipe i'm going to read it to you it's two cups of flour i've made this with almond flour and with regular flour and with whole wheat flour four teaspoons of baking powder it is good with this recipe to get the measurements I was just about to say to get the measurements right, and now I can't remember if I put in three or four. A half a teaspoon of salt, a half a cup of sugar, two eggs, two cups of milk or almond milk or water, one of those liquidy things, and two and a half tablespoons of oil. Before I put in the oil, it would have been good to mix in that baking powder. Otherwise, your whole pancakes are going to taste like baking powder. You know what else is fun about pancakes? When I make them for breakfast, which takes around three minutes, as you'll see, everyone feels like I made a really big breakfast. <laughs> So I'm gonna put my fire over here onto medium high, and I'm gonna add in a bit of oil. You can do this with Pam also, but I like the oils a little bit better. I like to coat the whole thing, it'll be crispy on the bottom. And we're starving, you hungry? My kids make their own pancakes from about age 
four. How'd you like that last segment that we did on forgiveness? Chaya Bean is amazing. It was so uh, amazing for me to see the two of you on the same page. We reach different people in different ways, but it, it's still the same message. Yeah. You, you need the Tronus. You need to let go. Yeah. I have an amazing story about that. I get a text from my friend, and she said, I have to tell you something. Try and call me. She got a call from a parent in whose kid was in camp with her son. The parent called her and said, your son is bullying my son in camp. And your son is so nasty and so mean. What kind of mother are you? And what kind of parenting goes oh on in gosh. your family? My friend is listening to this, and she's very taken aback. And she hung up the phone, and that was that, or that should have been that. But after that, whenever she would see the lady in town, it would be like cold shoulder. So this went on for years, and she just had this, this resentment because she was feeling very defensive and upset. And then um, fast forward, and this time it was her daughter and not her son, and they were in camp. These two, two siblings were now in the same bunk together. And the sibling of the other woman's child told my friend's daughter, I can't be in your bunk. My mother doesn't let. She says you have a bad family. And my friend said, like, this is crazy. Devastating. Devastating. How long is this going to go on? So she did an incredibly brave thing. She called her up and she invited her out to dinner. She said, I want to invite you out to dinner because I want there to be shalom between us. I want there to be peace between us. She didn't say, I'm right, you're wrong. She had this burning desire there should just be peace. The world cannot handle any more of this nonsense. And we can. And, and they met in the restaurant. And my friend reached out and she gave her a hug. And the woman hugged her right back. And she said, I'm so glad that you invited me. And they sat down together. Beautiful. And they didn't talk about what happened because what happened was nonsense. It was people being people and humans being humans and kids being kids. And they sat there together and my friend ended up helping her and she ended up helping her with their children. And I get to share this story with you. She said in that moment when she called this woman up to ask her out to dinner, she said like, I don't know if I ever did anything good in my life, but if I did one thing good, it was this moment. <laughs> They're like, okay, I'm doing my, my part to bring redemption. Imagine how happy that made Hashem. Yeah. Are you ready to taste our pancakes? Sure. Mmm. Yeah? Mmm. Mmm. It's totally perfect. Exactly. Mm. I'm having another. Yeah. Enjoy your pancakes, guys. Enjoy your comfort food. So we've spoken about how to forgive when someone has wronged you, but what if you are the one who has wronged someone else? And I brought in a very special guest, Rabbi Shlomo Slatkin. I love the work that Rabbi Slatkin does. He works with couples as a therapist, focusing on imago therapy to repair relationships. So I thought you were the perfect person to speak about what is the process of making amends. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Making amends in Jewish tradition is, involves two steps. One is taking ownership and admitting what you did wrong, and the other is having regret for what you did wrong and resolving not to do it again. That's what we call tshuva. And that is really what we're doing when we're making amends in a relationship, whether it's a spouse or a friend. Um, we want to admit that we did something wrong, and we want to do it in a sincere way. Um, we don't want to just do it to say, like, you know, please forgive me, but we really want to say in detail what we did um, and really specify and make them know that we really feel you know, we really feel hurt for what we did to hurt them. So the sincerity is a big point. Um, another thing is to really validate the other person's experience, to really get in their shoes, to kind of think about what it must have been like them to be on the receiving end and really feel that. Sometimes in a situation where you wrong another person, you really, especially if you, if you really wrong them in a, in a severe way, you really have to go out of your way and show how sorry you are. Um, you know, not maybe even feel, it might feel like groveling before them but if you care about the relationship and you want to repair sometimes you have to make the extra step so it's not always enough just to say sorry one time and hope the other person will forgive you you really have to make the extra effort to show that you're really sincerely sorry and then finally i find that when we ask for forgiveness besides feeling regret we actually have to take a step do a behavior to show that things are different because you know as we say talk is cheap we really need to show action so sometimes it's really showing an action and 
uh, encouraging the person that you're wrong, that you're going to be doing things differently now. You're not going to you know, re-injure them in that same way. Yeah. And action really shows that. I'm hearing you talk a lot about sincerity and being patient with a process that a person might not forgive you right away. Exactly. Yeah. And it sounds like from what you're saying, there's no quick way out. It's you got to like dig deep and really, it's almost like you're teaching yourself to regret it as every time you give, you extend more kindness or another apology or buy them another little gift, you're teaching yourself like this relationship is worth investing in and I really, I really messed with the trust here, you know? But it's a process of building. It's not just a, you know, yes. one time thing and we're, you know, right. forgiven and we can move on. Right. It's a process. So then we have this like concept of asking someone for forgiveness, let's say before Yom Kippur or something. Right where you, maybe they say they forgive you, but you haven't actually done this whole process of rebuilding the relationship. So what do you have to say about that, that point? It's a beginning. You know, asking forgiveness is a, for, is a beginning. Yeah. Um, but there's a level of sincerity in there. You know, there are people that feel like they just have the obligation to ask for forgiveness, and they do that. And that's why I said that it's really important to really take ownership for what you did and to detail it. Yeah. Don't say, oh, please forgive me. Like, I'm sorry I hurt you by doing this. It shows that you really... You know what you did. You're taking ownership for it, and you're asking for that forgiveness. Yeah. People can forgive, um, and you can rebuild a relationship no matter what you've done to hurt it. Um, but it is a process, and it's something that requires patience. But if you stay the course, you can experience that reconnection again. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. So we've talked a lot about forgiveness and it's important in our growth and in our ability to become close to Hashem. But how do we get there? Because we are all Yidden, because we are all Jews, we are one big soul. So when I forgive you for doing something to me, what happens? Maybe I will merit some wonderful thing in my life because Hashem is happy that I've forgiven another child. Or maybe what will happen is that I will be a power plant. This is an amazing concept that I learned from one of my teachers here in Baltimore, Mrs. Haya Crook, who I believe learned it from her teacher, Robinson Samet, which is the idea that we are power plants. And if we give over and forgive somebody else, that creates, just like a power plant, where is one in one location, but a light is on somewhere else in the room, that bracha that we've brought down into the world may save a Yidden in Eretz Israel or in the Yucatan or wherever. We're actually, although we may not even see it or know anything about it, it brings that blessing into our world, helping other Jews. So even if you feel that you can't do it for yourself for whatever reason, think of doing it for all the claw. Think of doing it for our progress forward towards Mashiach. Thanks for joining us, Shirky. You're welcome. Yeah, so we invited Shirky here because forgiveness is a topic for every age. I don't know what your elementary school was like, but your feelings get hurt all over the place. So I wanted to just get a kid's perspective, see what it's like for you. Have you um, ever got your feelings hurt, like, pretty bad? Yeah. This person that hurt you, they were in your school? Yeah, they yeah. were in my class. Are you still angry at them? No, not anymore. So how'd you get over that? I knew it was a test, so I just push myself hard enough that I got over it. That's remarkable. So, Shirky, what if, imagine that there was like a magic mirror and you could look in this mirror and you could just see the future and you could see how every single thing that happened to you, including that person who hurt you, was actually a present for you to build you into this amazing person who does amazing things, and without this pain happening to you, you wouldn't be the same. Well, then I'd probably say thank you to her for doing it. I want to offer that mirror to you for now, for your whole life, that when someone hurts you and you work hard to 
overcome that test of forgiving them. In that moment, you're actually becoming a greater person just by passing that test. Do you know that there were years in my life where I had no friends? One year, I remember, all my friends dumped me at once. I was like cool for about eight months, and then suddenly, bam, not cool, no friends, goodbye. And you know what I realized? I realized that because all those friends were so mean to me and dumped me, they actually gave me a big present that I learned how to enjoy my own company and how to enjoy people but not like need them every second, that I can just be by myself and read a book and go out. Yeah, so thanks for your time here. You might not realize how special it is at your age that you have such a big vision. You must have very special parents. I think you taught us a lot. Amazing!